In today's Catechism reading, we come to Lord's Day 12, which continues our look at the Articles of the Apostles' Creed dealing with our belief in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. I'm going to read the two questions and answers that go along with Lord's Day 12. First of all, from Lord, question and answer 31. Why is he, why is Jesus called Christ, meaning anointed? And the answer drawn out of Scripture, because he's been ordained by God the Father and has been anointed with the Holy Spirit to be our chief prophet and teacher who perfectly reveals to us the secret counsel and will of God for our deliverance. Our only high priest who has set us free by the one sacrifice of his body and who continually pleads our cause with the Father. And our eternal king who governs us by his word and spirit and who guards us and keeps us in the freedom he has won for us. And then the follow-up question, 32. But why are you called a Christian? Because by faith I am a member of Christ, and so I share in his anointing. I am anointed to confess his name, to present myself to him as a living sacrifice of thanks, to strive with a clear conscience against sin and the devil in this life, and afterward to reign with Christ over all creation for all eternity. Prophet, Priest, and King Lord's Day 12 may not seem at first to be the most exciting reading in the whole entire catechism. In fact, I'm guessing that the questions and answers here may feel like uh, somewhat dense theology to many of us. What does this prophet, priest, and king business have to do with our everyday lives, with a relationship with the Savior Jesus whom we confess together? But every time we say the words of the Apostles' Creed, whether it's together in worship or in our own devotional life, we confess something quite profound with just a few words. Just as it's helpful to know that the meaning of Jesus' name contains a hint of his mission as Savior, so it's also good for us to know what it means to confess him as Christ. Christ isn't Jesus' last name, it's a title that literally means anointed one. In other words, we believe that Jesus the Savior is also God's anointed one. In the Old Testament, anointing, like the anointing of David shown here in this picture, signified God's special favor and call on a person to serve in a specific role. The anointed figures of the Old Testament included prophets, priests, and kings, all of whom prefigure Jesus' ministry in many ways. Prophets are word people. They speak to people about God. They share the promises and plans of God. They call to repentance and offer salvation in God's name. Priests are ritual people. They go between, intercede through sacrifice, a sinful humanity, and a holy God to bring forgiveness and reconciliation. And kings are action people. They re enforce the rules. They guard, spur on his community. In his anointing by the Spirit, Jesus re receives these three callings from God, which he alone perf can perfectly fulfill. Our confession of Jesus as chief prophet sets us apart as Christians because Jesus is no longer just another in a long line of prophets. When we confess Jesus as our only high priest, we acknowledge that he has a unique place in salvation history as an intercessor between God and humanity. No other priest can gain for us the freedom Christ gives through his death and resurrection. And Jesus is our eternal king. We may live for a time under the delegated authority of other rules, but Jesus alone can guard and watch over us forever for our good. But we are also in Christ, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 5. And in Christ we too have received the Spirit, and therefore the anointing that is his. All that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up into heaven, he now accomplishes through those who bear his name, the name Christian on earth. We too have become prophets, priests, and kings to reveal in word and deed the work of God for his people. What an amazing calling this is 